right, we made it to Module 7. Didn't think we'd ever get here, huh? Um, this, this section is going to be a little familiar probably as far as the background because we've already done some things where we did, um, you know, predicting and that's what we're going to be looking at is forecasting over time. And so time series forecasting, there's different techniques, different ways to do this. Um, there's certainly, you know, you can think of how to forecast to look for cycles, trends, things such as that. Uh, we're not going to mess with the seasonal effects, but that's actually kind of interesting. We, in fact, we skip that section of the chapter, but we want to look to see if we can kind of forecast and see some kind of trends or see some kind of cycles happening. And so we're going to be looking at overall, and we're going to be doing regression again. All right, so that will be part of it, but we're going to look at some different ways that we actually could visualize, you know, as far as a graph, and then come up with what type of errors, which talks about here, what type of errors we would have when we check the actual minus the forecast. And a lot of this I'm just overviewing right now because you're going to see me do this in an Excel video. And so there's different ways that you can get uh, the different types of errors in our actual forecast, you're going to be doing the mean absolute deviation. All right. And so basically what you're doing is you're going to absolute value once again, the actual minus the forecast value. And then we average them and we do all the different techniques and we see which one has the smallest average, thus the smallest error. So there's many different error types in here. But once again, we're only going to be concerned with the mean absolute deviation for your application. Uh, the smoothing techniques, these are actually kind of weird because if you have a lot of fluctuations in your data, it just kind of smooths and gives you an overall picture. So there's different ways that we can smooth our data. Um, we can do one thing we could do is, is actually average data, the simple average versus moving average during versus weighted moving averages, and then even look at exponential smoothing. So a simple average is what you already know, right? Where you, you actually take the data, um, add up the data values and divide by however many values you have. And these numbers here, these subscripts, T minus one, so that would be time. In this case, these are a month. So the previous month, that would be two months ago, three months ago, and so on. So the simple average, then you could actually forecast the next, say you could forecast August based on just averaging all the ones before. So that's why it's simple. Um, the moving average pretty much says, well, let's only look, in, look at maybe the last five months, okay, instead of the entire period, and then you still average those. Um, so here, is just a, an example. If I want to compute a four month moving average, so let's say I want to figure out the next year, January, then I might just go to the four, September, October, November, December, and do an average off of those, then based on my next forecast. So that's what it's showing here. It's actually showing this example showing May. Notice they use January, February, March and April, so the previous four months, and then divided by four because it's four values, and to look to see with the actual, how much actual er error that you would have, okay, and a couple of other examples. Again, I do this in Excel, so I'm just kind of talking about it right now, um, and then when you look at it, this is where I said this is a smoothing technique, so instead of all these fluctuations and why it's moved over is because, remember, we're forecasting for say the fifth month based on the previous fourth month, fourth months, fourth months, <laughs> weighted moving average. This typically will put a weight based off of still these averages. And usually they'll put more weight on the previous month. Okay. Because that way you might say, well, the previous month really kind of tells us where we're going. And so that's very typical um, that you would wait the, say, let's, so let's say you're going back to May, that you would wait April more, okay, than maybe you would wait January. 
Notice here the divide by six based off of these weights, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you still divide by the particular value. And that's what they're showing here is, is now if I want to forecast May, then maybe I wait April more than I would wait March. Okay, then I would wait um, February and January. And then I can look at the different errors. And as you're going to see in my Excel video, we want to compare to see which one has the smallest error. Uh, exponential smoothing, they will give you a value of alpha. This is the exponential smoothing constant. This is not alpha like the type 1 probability error. Okay, so this will be given to you. So notice here you take the alpha times the actual and then 1 minus alpha times a previous forecast. So you're going to see that that has to be given to you as well, which we do in the application. And then this gives you the next month, let's say, to be able to find that forecast. Um, then we look to see overall trends. We look for linear trends. We look for quadratic trends. And sometimes you see this, you know, I'm, I'm one of these that I always say graph the data, graph the data, that the linear model sometimes may not fit as well as the quadratic model. And once again, we look at actual errors. And then finally, the second part, we will finish up, well, what if we actually have some type of correlation going on with our error terms? Okay, of our actual model. And so that's where we'll finish up. So watch my Excel video because that will get you straight through the application. All right. And then I'll come back in the part two and give you some hints that make sure you're successful on the actual quiz.